Isso aqui, oh, oh, é um pouquinho de Brasil, ya, ya. Hi, today we are going to talk about Cotswold. So Cotswold is a sheep and it is a, a long wool sheep. The size of the staple, the staple of, of the lock is a long one. That's why it's in the class of long wool sheep. So I have a few books about sheep. I have this one in sheep's clothing that I personally like and it talks a little bit about classification of sheep and what it's good for. Um, and I also have this wool, this book here, The Fleece and Fiber. Um, it's a pretty good book. I like it a lot. It has a little bit more information for each breed uh, than the other one. It is um, a book basically on English breeds. So you're not going to find uh, breeds that are specific from other uh, countries. It's more English breed. And, but it's very good. So some of the characteristics of the Cotswold is that it's a long wool and as a long wool, it doesn't have too much crimp. Because it doesn't have too much crimp, it reflects the light better. And the consequence of that is that it has more luster. It shines more. Um, it's a long uh, wool and then it makes it more resistant to. It's, it's very good. Um, of course, it depends on the project that you want. They, are going, they say that it's good for outer garments and for or rugs or stuff like this. But this is pretty soft. I think that because the Cotswold was originally brought into English in, into England by the Romans. And then in the 1700s or the 1900s, 1840, they start to develop the breed and cross it with the Laster. And for a, a while, because this cross um, gave uh, out a, a sheep that was big, but it, it had a, a slow growth, it was almost uh, became rare. But now we have it back, mainly, uh, I bought it in, in the US, um, because they, they are working for this fleece for, for spinners. So it's a breed that you can eat because it's a big sheep. It's like from 100 to 150 pounds. But it's also uh, a good fleece that spinners are interested in. So what I have been doing is I have been taking each lock and preparing to wash because even though this is a long wool and in general long wool uh, would not felt easily, this one does felt easily. This one and Laster, well, it's a cross with Laster. So it felt very easy. What I'm doing, I'm opening up a little bit the, the locks just to make it easier for the washing, for the soap and detergent to go through. And then once I have a pile like that, I will put in one laundry bag. And wash it. Another characteristic of the um, Cotswold is that the staple is more or less the same throughout the sheep. What is very good. There, but it's not something that is uh, normal for all the breeds. If you look at the Shetland, the normality for the Shetland is to have variety in the staple of their locks. Um, so this is good for this. I still have a little bit of difference in, in staple, but in general, they're very good. 
So what I did is I washed first the, um, the best part of the sheep because the sheep also has parts that are better. So I washed the, the belly part, not the belly, but the sides first. And now I'm working on the last. I've been working for a long time and I still have, uh, I still have fiber to prepare. My daughter used to say that I have very soft hands and this is because of the lanolin in sheep that I was constantly dealing with fleece. Now, not so much, but that was good. So this is the product clean or better. So after I have them in bags like this, I'm going to wash it. How I wash it, I use scour now. I could use only the regular detergent, but I noticed that this product is probably a product that has more um, detergent per liquid and it's better. So I bought this at the, the um, Fiber Garden and, but I used almost it all on this fleece and I still have fleece to wash. So what I do is I get very hot water in this soap um, then I put it there and I try not to I try just to press the the bags down and up um, to avoid felting then I take the first time that is going to be very dirty and I'm going to put more water and more um, scour and then I leave it there again and then I'm going to do two rinses with hot water. You always have to be careful to have um, the water hotter than, than the previous one is. So you leave there for 10, 15 minutes or 15 to 20 minutes uh, each time. And then you put new stuff to wash. And then you just let it dry. And once it dries, you take it off from the bags. So this is what it came out from the bag. I've been working on it, but it looks a little bit felted. But the cool thing is that it's totally not felted. So for some of the, the fiber, I was planning to, to cut the top part, not this one, but the other one that was uh, not so nice. But the thing is, it's good to take the, the fleece apart from this. So it's not felted, it's just on the top and then I can take from here and then just put on my comb so that I can start working later. So this has worked really nice for me and then once I have the fiber there I will just comb uh, everything I'm not the best comber and I don't normally do that because uh, it takes a lot of time but this fleece is beautiful and deserves to be used in the best way so normally because this is very dangerous it's very um, pointy and just for you to have an idea they in the medieval times they used to have the combs as a tool to um, to hurt people to get information or whatever torture people so um, so uh, what I'm doing here because the tips are more or less sticking together 
I just do a little bit of combing, combing on the ends before I start really working on it because I want to separate, open up a little bit. And then I'm not really the best comber, but um, I bought a video that I plan to wash again. This is just for this short thing and then I will when I start doing it the whole fleece right but in general what you should do is just pass from one comb to the other for three times at least so that you can take it out In this case, I'm just going to do twice, just for you to have an idea, and that's it. There's normally a lot of waste with this, because the, the goal here is to separate the short fibers from the long fibers. And, and then you have a better product. And they are also aligning the, the fibers so they are in parallel, they become a top. So this is what we consider waste. And in general, I just throw it out. But because I have been doing sleepers, I'm going to leave this separate in another pile and then I'll do the sleepers. So. You should fluff up a little bit and you can use anything as a disc. A disc is um, something that has a button, uh, a hole. You could use a button, um, but shells are perfect because they have this um, concave thing. So they're perfect for you to pull the wool. So what you do is you get a little bit of that fiber. And you go through. And then you pull. I would put a little bit more fiber, but this is just for not too much, but a little bit more than what I got here so that I can show more or less in this video. I'm not ready yet for this part of the process because I want to finish washing everything before I can do it. Okay. So once you have it there, you just roll it and there you are, it's ready for, for spinning. You have, I have a little bit more waste that I'm going to go to my waste pile here and this will be used for the sleepers. So this is part one. Um, Part two, I'm going to talk a little bit on the spinning technique, very little. <laughs> and then the knitting project, that is the sweater for my husband. I don't know yet um, what sweater it's going to be. But before I even start spinning, I have to make that decision so that I decide on what kind of... Uh, what how many plies i'm going to have or how thick i want each ply to be um but this will come after i finish washing everything i still have a little bit to wash and i have everything to comb so hang in there thank you two one rolling oi hoje a gente vai falar oh sorry isso aqui oh 
É um pouquinho de Brasil, iaia.